I'm sure you all know that there's some really sad news out of Ukraine. It's just really very hard to start to comprehend that this is actually happening as we speak. Russian troops attacked a maternity hospital. Multiple people were killed, including a six-year-old. Many people are calling it a war crime. It's hard to imagine, but in the midst of all this, ordinary Ukrainians who are just trying to survive, some of them are actually documenting their lives while the cities around them crumble. Many are living underground in bomb shelters, including this 20-year-old woman who's gone viral on TikTok. First, she shows what she sees outside her bomb shelter when she's able to go out, and you can see all the destruction and ruin. In this video, she chronicles a typical day in a bomb shelter. Her dad wakes her up. She uses a heat gun like a hair dryer. Her mom cooks. She gets outside for a bit just to get some stuff to take home. She also shows off what's in her bunker. So she's got a jacuzzi, which is just a tub, a place to read, her Michelin restaurant, that's her mom, some gym equipment, and some canned tomatoes. She then shows off what's in her bag, including a lot of different packaged foods items, which are all essential for life in a bunker. Mm. I could not stop thinking about this. It's almost like if Anne Frank had a video camera. Yeah, but you know, and Tori, that, that, that kind of goes to my point. It's so interesting you say that because, you know, as we sit in this era of like now, we're seeing people take the memory of Dr. Martin Luther King and misappropriating what he said. We're seeing people compare everything, including like their dry cleaning being late to the Nazis, you know, every, because there's no video proof footage and if you don't read the books and you weren't educated this you compare everything oh this is like slavery yeah we're going to have a forever living memory of what happened and i wonder if that is going to keep the you know the blowback that russia is going to get from this it's going to linger much much longer because it's not just going to be passed down from you know verbal it's going to be on camera this is what you guys did mm -hmm. and there'll be no question about it i wonder if that makes things different tori yeah social media blows my mind i've said it in the past just in the last week or two we've been talking about this because we have it all documented mm -hmm. like we think back to world wars and it's all black and white right. and it's kind of you know it's all distorted this is in real time and we have so much information as humans that it's it's overload right we can't even comprehend in our minds like there's hundreds of people thousands of people dying in ukraine we're like oh thoughts and prayers we don't even wrap our head around it but when you see a video right. of a daily right. life and now right. if this woman knock on wood if something happens to her we have a face and a story to put this to which it actually sinks in as human beings. Because when you're talking about everyone's this, like you were saying, everyone's that, everyone just equates it like they're to a playing a video game. Right. This is humanizing what's going on, and I think it's important. And I, think I don't it's very think important. Pete Putin realized the importance. I no. think he thought this war would be quick, and I think social media has come in as an ally, right. a weird ally in this whole war. Lindsay? And just really quickly, I think it's important that social media played a role in debunking everything that Putin was saying. He was saying we had satellite images, we had videos. That's right. So it's really played an essential role in this war, Al and I were talking earlier, and he's saying, you know, if this were 20 years ago, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have the same access to information. And so I think this is the, one of the one times that Jeff and I can agree that social media is actually really beneficial. Yes. Wow, let us know what you think. Great, great, really interesting take that I didn't think Putin knew about. Interesting. All right, some Ukrainians who are living through the war have relatives back home in Russia. So what are conversations like that, right, with those relatives? Well, one Ukrainian son told his Russian father about the war, saying he woke up after a city was bombed and escaped escaped with his one month old son. But this is how his father, remember, in Russia, responded. Take a look at this. She told me that the Russia started like a peaceful operation and they're trying to save us from the Nazi regime, which occupied our country. And uh, the most interesting thing was uh, that the Russian soldiers are giving uh, to the local people food and warm clothes. So that's the thing he saw on the TV. So if I just have to remind you all, Putin's like a KGB old school, like he was in it, and he's an old school dictator. So Russians literally only see what he wants them to see. So is this also going to work backfire? Because that's what they're not going to see it. I mean, that's a father to a son. It's kind of to the point we were just talking about, right? I don't think Putin expected this, yeah. to your point. I don't think he knew that all this information would get out there. It's a, I say the same thing. That's why I'm very... I walk on eggshells saying, let's go in there and assassinate him. I mean, then what? You're going to start taking over the country? We don't even talk about what's going on in North Korea, right? right? They're really isolated. They're inter they don't have internet. They can't do anything. They don't have electricity. Right, so at least some people in Russia are getting the message, which is good, and we, we kind of argued the other day. 
I don't think this war is going the way Putin thought it's going. And I think all. his people are not happy with what's going on. There are the, like, we talk about everything on the show. Now every single country is focused on Russia and what what they're doing is you, so inhumane. You want to know something else? Someone wrote me and said they're watching us in Ukraine. Mm. Wow. On YouTube. Now I'm not saying a lot of huge people, I'm not patting ourselves on the back. I'm saying you can get in a bunker some Wi-Fi and get really all the information you really need about what's really going on. But what's happening in Russia is they can't. Well, and I think there are people like searching for the truth and they'll they'll find ways to find it because young people especially are resilient. But then there is a bunch of people that have been indoctrinated. Even right. most recently, we talked about last week that Putin found the biggest celebrity child, put them on television to tell other children this war is all NATO's fault. This war. And so when you're starting at that level, how hard is it to come out of that lie? Yeah. You know, as people, when we tell ourselves things over and over again, we start to believe it. That's just a human behavior. And so imagine being growing up and living in a society under somebody that is a dictator in my eyes and constantly telling you lies and propaganda. Yeah.